Hey, this is Janine, and I'm here for your Diamond Mentor Moment on this wonderful Wednesday. And I'm here to talk to you about how to be a galactic boundary writer and what that means for our increasing ability of intercultural creativity. First of all, for those of you who are new, intercultural creativity of a pivotal term for this type of thinking and the workforce that we are in, in this VUCA environment. Intercultural creativity, creativity, not just artistry, but the ability to problem find and problem solve with value, relevance, and novelty. And intercultural competence, your ability to look at cultures, observe cult cultures, and to adjust your behavior and, and really act with complex complexity. And looking at those two together, how do you observe cultures, not just ethnic cultures, but different lived groups, different pe people of, of different backgrounds and lived experiences, and how do you create with them? So our final definition of intercultural creativity is the process of problem finding and problem solving with relevance, value, and novelty with people from different lived experiences. How does being a galactic boundary writer help us increase with this skill? First of all, this is the solar system, and I can do a whole other live about um, the 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 astronomer um i believe is um corner I, I forgot his name but galileo right af after him discovered that we are not things are not rotating around the earth the earth is not the center of the solar system they discovered that the sun was and the risk the amount of risk to put that out there was huge and i'm not going to talk about that now i'll probably talk about that in a different video but the sun is our is the center of our solar system. But I want to present something else to you today. Have you ever thought about the galaxy that our solar system is in? Those of you who have third grade science, you should know this. It's the Milky Way. And when you think about the Milky Way, have you ever thought about the position of our solar system within the Milky Way? Where is our sun and where's the earth within the Milky Way? Now our normal egotistical view is that, okay, well, it's probably near the center because that's the way we think. We're the center of everything. But our solar system is on the outskirts of the Milky Way. Did you know that? It blew my mind when I discovered this. You can watch Netflix, a show called The Universe, and it's the episode, The Milk Milky Way. And you can also look up a person I'm gonna to introduce to you at the end of this who's, who did her whole study on the Milky Way and are the old, oldest stars. But our solar system is, at, is in the outskirts of the Milk Milky Way. So what does that mean for our own journey in our intercultural development? There's a closer picture of what that looks like. When you are on the outskirts, there's a few benefits that we're not even aware that we're having, right? That talk about beneficial, beneficial positioning. When you're on the outskirts, you um, we don't reflect on where, where we are, but for us being on the outskirts in the Milky Way, we actually have advantage of day and night. In this picture here, it is nighttime. And in this picture here, if we were in the center of the Milky Way, our nighttime would be filled with millions of stars. But because we're on the outskirts, it's only filled with hundreds or thousands of stars, depending on where you are. If you're in Los Angeles like I am, you have light pollution, so you don't have access to so many stars. But if you go to the Grand Canyon, like I did one time, it's like someone threw a whole bunch of vanilla covered raisins across the sky. It was beautiful, but it was still nighttime. But if we're in the center of the universe, there's so many stars out there, it'll look like it was daytime. It'll be daytime 24 hours a day. So that's one of the benefits that we have for being on the borders, right? The boundary of the Milky Way. Another benefit that we have for being on the boundary of the Milk Milky Way is that we get to see other galaxies. If we were in the inside, we would be inundated with just light and 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 smoke and just dust or right, the cloud dust. We wouldn't be able to see anything practically. But because we're on the boundary, we are we have the technology now to see 
galaxies upon gal galaxies in the universe. What is our universe made of? You know, is there anything else out there? What does that look like? And we can actually view that with, with visual technology, with in infrared and, and other types of wavelength technology. So the fact that we are on the outskirts is a blessing. Now, what does this mean in our own, um, in our own journey of intercultural creativity? There's a book that you've heard me reference before, if you follow my work, called The Medici Effect. And in The Medici Effect, Franz Johannesson says that innovation lies at the intersection of fields, disciplines, and cultures. Meaning it's those people who are boundary riders of either their fields, their disciplines, their cultures, or other types of grouping. They have access to different ways of seeing things, different perspectives. The Medici effect talks about the importance of being boundary writers. Malcolm Glad Gladwell talks about it and Adam Grant talks about it in, in their books. The, the highly creative thinkers are boundary writers, like our Milky Way is a boundary writer or our, our solar system. Sis our solar system is a boundary rider within the Milky Way. So what does this look like for you on a day-to-day -day basis? How can you increase your positioning of being a boundary rider within either your fields, your disciplines, or within between cultures? When I say cultures, I don't just mean ethnic and national cultures. I mean just different groups of people with various values and lived experiences. Number one, take inventory of your own demographics and your own psychographics. Be aware of where you stand. Like I said, I've never thought about where the solar system was within the Milky Way. That question has never crossed my mind before. And so that's probably why I was blown away that it was so much on the edge because my egotistical nature that all humans have, right, is that we're in the center. So we have to be intentional about um, placing ourselves elsewhere. And so being aware of where you are in your demographical journey and seeing how many other people with diverse experiences are in your sphere of influence, right? And so you can look at gender, you know, do I only hang around other women or do I have other, uh, other groups that are in my sphere of influence, your ethnicity, your education level, your social economic level, level your uh, belief system. So not that you have to agree with everything that other people may, may bring to your, your sphere, but that you're just aware that there's other types of living out these experiences. Look at your social groups, which is attached to the first example I, I gave. Look at what type of experiences that you'll be having with new diverse groups. Really see um, if you can have some cultural comparisons. And so for instance, there's rites of passage, right? Um, in some American groups, you have like your Sweet 16, in some Latin, Latin groups, you have your quinceañeras and um, your bat mitzvahs or bar mit, uh, mitzvahs. Different groups have different rites of passage. You, you can do some cultural comparisons there, look at similarities and look at differences and just be aware of patterns. Nothing's right or wrong. You're just being aware of the comparisons and how people do things a different way. Um, you can look at things easy like your food and customs, or you can look at the hard work like deep beliefs and different family structures and family patterns. That is up to you. But being a boundary writer is key. Being exposed to different perspectives is key. If you see my work, you'll hear me constantly saying that. But for some pe pe people, it takes more than one time to hear it. I want to introduce to you Anna Freebell. I met her at a networking event um, a, a week or so ago, and she is the author of a book called Searching for the oldest stars. She is a professor over at M MIT in the area of astrophysics. My twin sister majored in astrophysics, so it's good to see another woman in astrophysics. There's not too many out, out there. Hopefully we can increase that number. But I just wanted to highlight her and highlight her work since I'm talking about the Milky Way and that's the Milky Way is a part of her, um, her expertise and her studies as well. And so I just wanted to encourage you to be a boundary writer. You're already a boundary writer because you're on Earth in the solar system, in the milk Milky Way. And so be aware that we're not at the center. You don't always have to be at the center of everything. If you get to the edge, you can see, see amazing things.
you can see amazing things. And so I want to just leave you that with the diamond, or I just wanted to leave that with you for your diamond mentor moment. My book will be coming out. I'm so excited. The Seven Gems of Intercultural Creativity, How to Connect, Create, and Innovate across cultural lines. And to get across those lines, you might have to get closer to the boundary. So be aware of that. And my son is coming out with his book, I Am Creative. And that goes over the 16 diamond tools of creative thinking. Thank you so much for joining with me today. And I will see you next time. Be a boundary writer. Bye.